Hello again, you know, stuck with Mastermind Games. Back with more uh, of the Rogue Trader box set for Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team with the Curse Mites. And Leaf Green 09011. And Curse Mites are common vermin found all over the Imperium that have been mutated by the Geller Box into. <sighs> Large uh, and deadly killers. It's <sighs> about three in the morning as I'm recording this because work, followed by loud uh, neighbors the night before. So I'm kind of out of it right now, but I want to get this done. solid coat here and this will go fairly quickly. I can use a bigger brush because this is covering the majority of the model. A bit too much water there. You want just enough water to thin the paint, keeping your brush Moist but not excessively wet. But <laughs> that should come as no surprise that most subjects of the Imperium of Mankind live in absolute filth. The Geller Pox can mutate normally annoying but fairly harmless parasites into massive and dangerous creatures, at least for their size. So. Now. I'm not sure on the kill team stats because I've not played that game. I don't have a rule book for it. But in Warhammer 40,000 stats, these guys are honestly less than spectacular. But the models still look great. So let that dry. We'll move on. And go. Next, Rosy Skin 09068. Going on the, uh, it would be a proboscis for this uh, normal insect, but this is some kind of feeding tendril. cluster of them on this one. Not as much here. And then lemon yellow zero nine zero zero nine. Mm. 
and getting the abdomen here. Many of these is covered in mucus. I guess not as they don't all have the same array of spines on their abdomens either. That last one had rows of spikes, this one has a fin. Again, chaos and Nurgle. There's also mucus here, which is going to get cut in a different color later. But Back to the base because just about that dry. Move on with it. And next, uniform gray. Some of which have more rocks than others. Now I'm going to do some mucus with uh, Creamy Ivory 09144. Excuse me. This one doesn't really have any. One's got it dripping off the back. Shading and highlight on this mucus to make it something. Well, it's really in the morning as I do this. Okay. 
Okay, that's got base coat, so once that dries, I can start shading. Alright. Huh. Time to uh, shade. And I'll start with Rosy Shadow 0967. Thinning out the paint with one part water to one part paint, making it into a wash. Oh boy, I'm dropping a bunch of frames. Okay, let's hang on a second. See if this. So, oh, the joys of technical difficulties strike again. Alright. Alright. I think we're stabilized. Once again, because this will probably never cease to be funny, the more technology advances, the ones turning out like that Mel Brooks movie, Spaceballs. So, my order of, uh, my painting cue has changed slightly because of a purchase today. I will still finish the Rogue Trader box set, and then it's going to be Monster Apocalypse, and then something I just picked up today that I will be, um, showing off later and then getting into War Machine Horde, War Machine Hordes, some more uh, 140,000 related stuff, and some Malifaux, and then a lot of Warhammer 40,000 stuff. So, I'm just going to keep what comes after Monster Apocalypse a surprise for a little bit longer. So, uh, and then I'm going to use a little oh, mucus. I think a little moldy skin 09149. I need to be very careful I don't get this onto the parts I want to keep the bright yellow, so this is gonna be tricky. Again, thinning it out and working from the highest point on the model to the lowest. This one didn't really have any, but this one does. Make sure I get the right color. Okay. I'm going to have to let that dry a bit before moving on. Okay, next. Zero nine zero one zero. Again, one part paint or one part water to one part paint. Though darker colors will need a little extra water to three parts, typically. Getting the carapace here. It's going to be one more layer of shading after this. Fish uh, fin than a roll of spines, but <laughs> such is chaos.
brush nice and white during this. screen of a movie I'm about to watch in the other room while I wait on this paint to dry. Specifically an episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000, which happens to be my favorite show, so... Oh, God. There we go. Once that dries, I can wrap up the uh, rest of the shading. I'm gonna go from there. Okay, next, Stormy Gray 09088. And this one just has a little bit of this. to the shading I can get the la uh, the eyes as well so I'll take pure white for that or matte white excuse me pure white was named the other brand white dotting in the eyes. Now notice I'm using my offhand, the one I'm holding the model with, to brace the fingers on my dominant hand. That's to help stabilize for the fine detail work. And the last shade is going to be Sun Yellow 09008. Carefully filling in on base coats, you want to go to the lowest part of the model, go to the highest, shading highest to lowest, and highlighting lowest to highest. Okay. Once that dries, I can highlight and wrap up. All right, time to highlight. So, 
Read me I three zero nine one four four. Switching to a dry brushing technique. So ragged feathered brush, no water, straight paint only. Rubbing most of the excess out on a paper towel. Looks like there's nothing left. Get out of there. And then lightly dusty area to be applied, to be affected. Refreshing the paint as necessary. Rosie Highlight 09069. Pale green zero nine zero one two. Big one is Emerald Green 09103, which is a. Oh boy, I'm dropping frames. Oh boy. Now let's give this a minute to sort out because this Emerald Green is metallic green and it's running a bit thin, so it's going to take a little work for me to get enough out of here to work with. out on my palette. I use a piece of glass for that. But now I'm just going to wait for my camera to start playing nice again. Are we good here? Okay, okay. Looks like we're cool. Uh, 
Oh boy. You know, there's actually a very good reason why things don't last anymore. That reason is planned obsolescence. In other words, nowadays companies want you to buy the same thing over and over again, so they design things to wear out sooner and sooner. And we're just kind of used to it. Okay, and letting this catch on the raised areas. These curse mites actually had a lot of differences between each other, sculpt-wise, so were much more interesting to paint than I thought they would be. Well, and that is a good thing, actually. Okay. Misty Gray, 09090. As my camera side doesn't want to focus on anything anymore. Oh boy. I don't need very much of this. I do need the right size brush. done. Now matte black and switching to a flathead. I'm just going to touch up the bases. And then once that's dry, I can uh, apply the base material. Flathead brush for this one. A well, round brush is going to be your best friend for most of this. Flat head is going to be better for wide and flat surface areas. You just need to be careful where the feet touch the base, but in this case, we're very clear of that. And while normally such tiny connection points to the base would make me nervous, these are solid enough not to make me not to make me concerned about stability or breakage. Different manufacturers use different plastics and resins. King's Workshop uses a pretty sturdy one. Breakage does occur sometimes, usually while trimming, cutting things off the sprues, but it's pretty rare. And most breakage is easy to fix as long as you've got all parts involved and a little bit of glue and patience. Okay, now I need to let that dry before I add the basic material. Just about done. Alright, second to last step. Taking a white glue, using any available container. This is a cap, an old cap from a Gatorade bottle. White glue and water. Let's get my basic material on. Open up here. 
and his talus of or rock debris is a mix of fine, coarse, medium, and coarse. I'm mix up this in the solution using a brush that uh, I'm more or less sacrificing for the purpose. Painting around the feet. In this case, this will be easier than most. a spare brush that's dry to push the excess away from where I don't want it, but in this case that one's actually okay on the first try. That rarely happens. Okay, this is a little just because of where I have to have my uh, bowl of material. On this is repetition practice. Now this I do need to push some of that out of the way. Kind of like that. Is going to have to set for a while before I finish up because if I don't give it a chance to set before I seal it, then the sealer will just push the basic material around and make little divots. So I'm going to be giving this a couple hours because I'm going to my madness inducing day job soon, but. I'd say under normal circumstances, and this will vary based on temperature and humidity, that 30 minutes or so is enough time. Again, in most cases. It's always better to give more time than less to this. And okay, yeah, that's pretty good, so just need to seal that, let that set, and then I can seal it. Okay, wrapping up. A spray of brush on adhesive. Glass eyedropper. This stuff will bond the plastic rapidly. And just carefully dripping it around the base. This will seal the material and give it a rock hard finish. So it'll stay on the model and not end up in a in your bag or box or table. Last step after this is to, uh, once this dries, varnish it, which I can't do on camera because it involves a spray can. In other words, I don't want to get fumes from the spray can in here. And there we go. The curse mites from the Gilmer Pox Infect Factor of, Gro of our Warhammer 40,000 and part of the Rogue Treasure box set. Uh, continue with more of these mutated insects. Until next time, I'm Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games, signing out.